we're going to finish off uh, with an announcement from our good friend Jeff Harris uh, about flying fish, which I think some of you have probably already heard uh, some of the press about. So Jeff's going to come up and share a little bit more about that. Uh, and then he's got a great uh, fireside chat he's going to take you guys through. Jeff, come on up. All right, everybody, welcome, Jeff. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Bob. And so I am Jeff Harris. I am one of the founders of Flying Fish Venture Partners. We are the newest venture capital firm in Seattle. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I'm really going to take you mostly through a pep talk about Seattle. We are unabashedly bullish about Seattle. And I'm going to tell you the reasons why and the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. I do want to start by giving a shout out to Seattle Angel Conference. So I got my start investing in Seattle Angel Conference. So if you go back, was it SAC 2, I think, um, Charlie Kindle and I were working at Microsoft together. And he said, you should do this thing called Seattle Angel Conference. And I had no idea what it was. And I said, OK, because I just do what Charlie tells me to do. So I came, and I got hooked. Uh, and so fast forward, now I'm launching a venture capital firm. So this is a cautionary tale to all the investors out there. This is an addictive space, and you might find yourself inclined to raise a venture capital fund, and we should talk. But I want to talk a little bit about why we're bullish about Seattle, the things we're seeing, and kind of give you a little bit of an introduction to the firm and how we plan to work with the community. So we start with this kind of somewhat um, uh, bullish statement. We believe that the next several billion dollar companies will be built in Seattle. And that's not really that shocking of a statement when you think about what has come before. We are, after all, home to two of the largest technology companies in the history of the world. So it's not that billion dollar companies can't and don't get built in Seattle. But we believe firmly that the environment is right for the next several billion dollar companies to be started here. In fact, we think that they're already started and it's a matter of cultivating them. Now, I want to just kind of remind you, and this is a bit of an eye chart, I realize, but we have a history of innovation in this town. Back way from the start of the founding of Seattle, this has been an entrepreneurial town. And we build businesses that last. That's a difference, I would say, from some of the other markets that we tend to compare ourselves to. We build businesses that last. And this has been a long history, but even in the recent past, there have been tremendous successes coming out of Seattle. And I just thought we'd take a second just to remind ourselves of a couple and celebrate them. And the reason that I put these ones up specifically were, these were great outcomes um, for the city, for the founders, but also for investors. And so when we look at what's coming out of Seattle and what should we celebrate, here are a few that we put up there. So Seattle, you may or may not know, had two IPOs in the last 12 months in the technology space. That is not necessarily very typical. Um, and many other markets in the country would kill to have that outcome. So we should celebrate that. In addition, there was Turi and Elemental, two very, very nice acquisitions that occurred in our region over the last few years. So we're very excited about what has come when we look backwards and say what has happened over the last few years, but we're much more bullish about what the future holds. Now, that said, all is not wonderful. Uh, there are some challenges. And so we had a feeling when we started working on this idea of raising a fund that there were some challenges and some problems with the funding environment. As we looked at the data, we found some pretty stark things. And the first thing we found was that Seattle currently ranks dead last for participation in Series A deals by a local firm. So one question you may ask is, well, why does that matter? Doesn't capital come from anywhere? And the answer to some extent is yes. But we are firm believers that in the seed and Series A timeframe of a company, local matters. So we believe businesses are still figuring it out. They have holes in their team. They're having to find customers. They're figuring out what it means to scrape their way to a million dollars in revenue. In those times, it makes a difference that you have people who will help you get there. And so that's why we believe that it matters. And when we look at these numbers, you know, we look at it vis-a-vis -vis the Valley and you say, oh, okay, sure. It's not surprising that Seattle would trail the Valley in terms of local VC. 
But when you start to look at things like Chicago and Austin, it starts to feel not right and not where Seattle should be and certainly not where we aspire to be. So this is something we looked at and said, we can do something about this. Now, embedded in this slide is some good news and some not so good news. On the good news front, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, on the angel side of the equation, things have actually gotten much, much better over the last five years. So the amount of dollars and amount of organization of the angel community has gotten much, much better. And so that's this chart on the left. Now, a disclosure about both of these charts, these are in the industries that Flying Fish will look at. Um, so we don't do, for example, medical tech. We don't do biotech. We don't do clean tech. So in those industries, the data may look different. But for the industries that we care about, this is what we see. So a great increase in terms of dollars and deal flow at the angel level. However, at the Series A level, actually declining deals and dollars. And so this just exacerbates what was already a pretty challenging situation. There was already discussion of the Series A gap in Seattle. Well, our data suggests that that's getting worse, not better. And so again, we want to step in and help. So we see that last chart, and we see not necessarily a problem, but we see an opportunity. And so when we look forward and think about what is Seattle going to look like in the next five years, we see nothing but positive indicators. And so I want to walk you through some of those. So the first is, we truly do lead the industry in talent. We've always been a great technical town. There's always been great technical talent here. Obviously, Amazon and Microsoft are here, many others. But in the last five years, a couple of things have fundamentally changed that picture. The first is Amazon itself. So if anyone's paying any attention to downtown Seattle, you know that it's being transformed by Amazon. And thousands and thousands of technical um, hires are coming into Seattle and working for Amazon. But you also probably know that the average tenure to Amazon is not that long. And so people are churning out, and what are they doing? Well, some of them will go across the pond and hire at Microsoft, but many of them are founding fantastic startup companies. And so we see that as a huge opportunity. The other thing that's happened, and this is a trend that has you know, been more than five years in the making, but has truly accelerated in the last five years, is every valley company that you can shake a stick at has a remote development center in Seattle. And that's from the very large, you know, the Facebooks and the Googles and the Apples of the world, down to the very small. And this is another source of amazingly entrepreneurial tech talent that's coming into Seattle that didn't exist five years ago. And so we believe the raw material to make more and better startups is here. It is also the case that it's not just technical talent. So one of the challenges that we see and that we have, hope to work on over the next few years is in building a business, especially in technology businesses that we look at, technical talent is absolutely required, but it's not sufficient. You need other talent as well. Who's going to run the business? Who has operational experience? Who has marketing experience? Uh, and so we need not just that technical talent, but also business talent. So a statistic that we are positive about is that if you look at Amazon and Microsoft, Together, they hire more MBAs than McKinsey worldwide. That's pretty staggering. And that's more talent that we think can augment the technical talent in terms of building great businesses. Another key component of any ecosystem is the university ecosystem. So obviously, when we compare ourselves to the Valley or Boston, they have tremendous university ecosystems. Well, let's give credit where credit is due to the University of Washington and what they've done over the last five years. So just one statistic is if you look at this graph, the, the numbers, the lines are applications to various programs at the University of Washington. Everything is more or less flat, with the exception of CS. So the big hockey stick curve is CS. And that feeds into the fact that the University of Washington has stated an intent to double the number of CS grads over the next five years. They're building a second CS building. They have a huge infusion from donors. It's very exciting times for the University of Washington. When you combine that with commotion, we're very bullish on what we can accomplish 
in concert with the University of Washington over the next five years. So we see, you know, really all the indicators being up and to the right, right? Like, what we'd like to see. Now, if we look back five years, I just want to take a second to celebrate a couple of things. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you look back five years in terms of the very early stages of company formation, we tend to take a tremendous number of things for granted, but we shouldn't. So this is an example of things that didn't exist even five years ago. So let's talk co-working spaces. There were very, very few. There's now four WeWorks in this town. Now one may question whether we need four WeWorks, but there are four WeWorks in this town. Um, not to mention Galvanize, The Riveter, a whole bunch of others. I mean, it's, if you can't find a co-working space now, you're doing something wrong, right? Um, in addition to that, there are the incubators and accelerators. So if you go back five years, Techstars, Pioneer Square Labs, Comotion, Alexa Accelerator, Microsoft Accelerator, none of those existed five years ago. And maybe most importantly, on the angel funding side of the equation. So five years ago, none of these existed. The Alliance of Angels Sidecar Fund, Seattle Angel Conference, Seattle Angel Fund, the Swan Fund, the Alexa Fund, I'm forgetting probably several others, Element 8 Fund. So all of these sources of capital have come into the marketplace in the last five years, in addition to individual angels that have stepped up their game. So we actually think now that it is a fantastic environment to start a company. Um, it is relatively easy to get funding at the angel level now. Now I know that may sound somewhat controversial. I know it may not always feel that way when you're out there raising money as, as a founder, but we think compared to where the ecosystem was five years ago, it's a totally different environment. But again, we think that that has, to some extent, pushed the problem down the road. So now, great, you were able to raise an angel or seed round, then what? And so that's really where we as Flying Fish want to step into the fray, is to help companies get from that very earliest seed or angel stage through a seed two or series A or whatever we want to call that round um, that gets you to the point where the business is really ready for growth capital. So you've figured out the business, you know what the equation is, and you're ready to take capital from at that point, frankly, anywhere. It doesn't really matter so much anymore that it's local capital. So that's the job that we wanna do for the ecosystem over the next few years. So we think we've built the right team to do this. And so I just wanted to spend a couple minutes to introduce who we are um, and kind of what we're looking to do in the ecosystem. So myself, I mentioned that I got my start uh, angel investing here at Seattle Angel Conference. I've been a very active angel investor in town since then. My career was spent by and large at Microsoft in the technical um, arenas, so I spent time doing digital media, um, mobile, and then the last thing I did at Microsoft was speech and natural language, leading up to the formation of the Cortana team at Microsoft. The, my other partner who's here somewhere, so Frank Chang is here. Um, Frank and I worked together for years at Microsoft, and then uh, he came across the lake and went to Amazon. And so for the last several years has been running the affiliates business at Amazon and is now left to do uh, Flying Fish full time. And then the third partner is Heather Redman, who many of you know, a very active angel investor in town, um, as well as an operator, most recently at a big data startup called Index. Um, Heather also does about a million other things. Uh, in fact, the reason that she's not here right now is that she is the incoming chair of the Chamber of Commerce and she's in Mexico uh, on Chamber of Commerce business, and so that's why she's not here. But we think that we have put together a pretty unique mix of operators, um, finance background, and we think we're really poised to help companies get, again, from that seed and, and early uh, angel raise into their Series A and beyond. What we're looking for is we're really looking for early stage technology companies. We are regionally focused, so we say Seattle, but our purview is really um, Portland to Vancouver. That's a heavy focus on Seattle. Because we're regionally focused, we don't restrict the industry too much. So we kind of pithily say, if there's software in it, we'll take a look. Um, what we won't do, therefore, is things that are heavy on hardware, uh, medical devices, clean tech, biotech, et cetera. We're really focused on software IT in the Pacific Northwest. So that's just a little bit about Flying Fish. Um, I just wanted to say again also that there are a lot of friendly faces out there. A lot of people in this room have helped us get where we are, and so we really appreciate that, um, and we're really looking forward to working with the community over the next years to come. So thank you.